today on Steampunk Minecraft, The Iron Farm, an essential aspect of our steampunk world. Join me as I construct crucial crafting contraptions, automated assembly lines, and of course, I have to include my hostile visitors as well. Come along for the ride as I'm building an iron farm in Steampunk Minecraft. You want to play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code DOUBLESAL at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. Well, would you look at that? It snowed! Which probably means that our sugarcane farm and... Yep, that is exactly what I thought. Anyways, it's time to build an iron farm. Hello, who do we have here? Oh, jeez, I did not mean to hurt you, I'm sorry. Oh! In hindsight, once he hit me the first time, I probably shouldn't have gone up to him a second time, but live and learn. But they do need to go. I'm sorry, friend, but you were just in the way. Don't mind if I do. But seriously, the fact that I'm scavenging from dead villagers means that we need an iron farm. The first step for our iron farm is to make crushing wheels. Really large wheels that grind blocks up into a fine powder. The crafting recipe is expensive, and it does require a machine that we don't have. This being a block called the Mechanical Crafter. Thankfully, the Mechanical Crafter blocks themselves aren't too expensive. It's a good thing I was able to get brass in the last video. After this, I came to the conclusion that a machine of this size needed its own space. The Mechanical Crafter is pretty large, so it was time to expand the workshop a little more yet again. This meant terraforming. Lots and lots of terraforming. But after the dirt had been cleared, a lovely courtyard began to take shape. And within it, plenty of space to build mechanical crafters, crushing wheels, and even a storage area if we needed it. Yes, friends, this courtyard was gonna do just fine. Although there was a bald spot in the corner, so I needed to fill that in with a tower or something. Unfortunately, I had to stop. Due to the cold weather conditions, the corners of my screen were beginning to freeze. It was only a matter of time before I'd succumb to frostbite, so I had to sleep through the night. But come the next morning, I was able to finish the tower and essentially complete the courtyard. Although I did add a little detail to the outer wall. You know, just to give it a little pizzazz. Doesn't it look nice? After that, it was back to the mine for more andesite. Although I did get more than I bargained for, there was this really interesting block that was just calling to me. Of course I had to mine it because look at it, this thing was glowing! It was beautiful, and it was also a bomb. I guess when it comes to these blocks you have to mine them from a safe distance because when you get close to breaking them, they explode. I honestly don't even know what this material's for, but it better be worth all the pain and suffering I just endured. I then stumbled across a tarantula spawner. Now, what's the difference between a spider and a tarantula in Minecraft? I don't know, I didn't want to find out, I was not gonna let them hurt me. Eh, the loot inside the chest was okay too, I guess. With all the materials collected, it was finally time to construct the machine. It's pretty simple, really. You just have to lay out the tiles in a grid format, similar to that of a crafting table. And of course, there is the matter of powering the machine as well. Just make sure you don't overstress your water wheels or it's not gonna work. Now comes the fun part. Adding each individual item to the large crafting grid. This thing costs a lot of andesite alloy, but once all the materials are placed on the crafting grid, then they all come together to form your one big item. And in this case, I crafted a pair of crushing wheels. Yes, the recipe was expensive, but at least they do give you two crushing wheels for it. I mounted them on the walls, and I patted myself on the back because I was very grateful I added this extra space. After that, I had to follow some regulated safety standards because crushing wheels are deadly. This meant platforms. This meant safety barriers. You can't cut corners when it comes to safety. I mean, you could, but... That's only if you want to end up like that guy. Zero days without a workplace accident. It was time to power these puppies, and we couldn't put them on the same power source as everything else because by this point, our factory was on the verge of being overstressed. So we had to give them their own independent water wheels. One water wheel for each crushing wheel. Once the wheels were rotating, it was finally time to put them to the test and see what they could do. So I went up there, tossed in some gravel, and went down to see what was on the other side. I don't know what it is about the crushing wheels animation, but it's just so sad satisfying to look at. With crushing wheels going, it was now time to add the next part of our machine, a cobblestone generator. One that would auto mine and continuously feed stone into the crushing wheels. But for this design to work, we needed a new block called a brass funnel. 
Reason being was because we were going to have to sort items, and the funnel acted as a filter allowing only certain items to pass through. And the reason I needed this, and the crushing wheels, and the mechanical crafter, all of it I needed because I was making clay. You see, when you crush cobblestone enough times, it turns into sand. And that sand, when washed with water, it can turn into clay. And sometimes there were some extra byproducts, hence the reason we needed the filters, because we only wanted the clay. For this to work, I was gonna need a new assembly line underneath the pair of crushing wheels, so I dug a hole, laid down a conveyor belt, and began prepping the line for our new clay farm. Then all of a sudden, I was being attacked by this little goblin caster. He was throwing fireworks at me, so I had to put him down. With the goblin dead, I began placing chests and setting up the funnels. And the great thing about the funnels is that not only can you filter items, but you can also set an amount to pass through. Now this whole time, the cobblestone generator and the crushing wheels were working together and making a bunch of sand. I had been setting stacks aside to see if we could use them as a means of testing the assembly line. Let me show you how it all works. It all begins with the crushing wheels, which breaks up the cobblestone, turning it into gravel and then into sand. There's also a small chance that the crushing wheel can make a clay ball. So we have that filtered out right at the beginning. There's even a higher chance for it to make flint, so we do have that filtered out as well. The only thing left on the line should be sand, which is stored in this chest, and it's not allowed to come out until there's at least a stack of it. And once the stack is ready, it comes out through the other end, and it gets washed by the water. Once the sand is washed, there is a 25% chance that some of those blocks can turn into clay. It's a long and tedious process, but all of it is crucial if we're gonna build an iron farm. Because what can you do with clay blocks? You can turn them into bricks. That's right. This whole effort was to make automatic bricks. A beautiful choice of building block if you want to build any type of iron farm. It was time to lay the foundation of the next building. Like always, I began with a simple stone outline. I had an idea of how I wanted this to look, which is usually not the case. The floor was going to be granite. I mean, come on, granite is a go-to block and it just fits so well with the steampunk theme. As for the foundation, it looked a little off. I had to back up and look at the foundation from every angle, and I came to the conclusion that it was the bricks and the smooth stone blocks. I ended up swapping the blocks, having the bricks go to the bottom and the smooth stone blocks going on top. There we go, much better. After that, I added two wings to each side of the building, and once the wings were done, it was finally time to raise the walls. And like I said before, granite is the go-to block, and what pairs well with granite? Sandstone. After that, I began constructing the front of the building with these beautiful granite columns. And once I began incorporating the brick blocks that we had been making this whole time, it was my belief that this building was finally getting that steampunk feel. Although these two random guys just decided to rain down on my parade and attack me. You know, for a mod pack called Steampunk Minecraft, it's kind of strange that they'd include medieval knights, but hey. I guess this is progress versus the past. Once they were taken care of, it was back to work. The factory was 50% done, but we still had to add the machines. And there was one block I needed, and I had to go to the nether to get it. Went into the portal, and I was instantly blown up by a creeper waiting on the other side, and not only that, but he closed the portal. Thanks to him, me and a bunch of other villagers were now stuck in the nether. Not only that, but then I was being attacked by this magic man. Thankfully, he was a little clumsy, and he fell to his doom. Anyways, this was supposed to be a simple trip for soul sand, and now with the portal closed, I also have to find gravel for flint, because I need a flint and steel. Thankfully, it didn't take too long before I stumbled across this really small patch of gravel. Now to get flint, you have to break gravel over and over again, but I wanted to get the flint instantly. You know, my ice packs, they were melting and I was gonna burn up. So there was one way of doing it through a cutting board. At least I thought that was the way. Anyways, I crafted the cutting board, smacked it with a shovel, and guess what? It just gave me more gravel. So yeah, it was an instant after all. It was a waste of time. After spending an eternity mining and placing gravel over and over again, I finally got my flint, crafted my flint and steel, and I was off once again looking for the soul sand. Although I didn't have to look too far because it was directly across from me, though it was being guarded by this giant robot looking demon. I got a little brave and decided to fight him head on, and that was a big mistake. Never going back to the nether again, I hope I don't have to come back because honestly, <laughs> I almost always die here. After the nether, it was time to go back into the mines. At this point, I was running pretty low on resources, so it was time to stock up. I even found some random minecart loot. But yeah, it was pretty uneventful. Got some iron, got some gold. I was even able to trade my iron ore for double the amount in the form of iron ingots thanks to this goblin trader. Back at the iron farm, it was finally time to start building the machine. So I began by placing soul sand as well as a chest in the middle and two funnels on each side. I then began prepping the iron generating mechanics itself. I connected a series of chutes together, that way the materials could all drop in one spot. 
Above the chutes, I placed millstones that would grind up our blocks. The setup was finally taking shape, but there were a couple of components that needed to be added, like the encased fan. And with that added, it was simply a matter of powering it all. Alright, now's the part where I have to connect everything and make it work, which is usually the tricky part, but in this case, I already prepped a design in a creative world, so I know what I'm doing. And then with the three water wheels in the back, our machine finally came to life. It took a while, but we finally had an iron farm. The only thing left to do was to calibrate it. The chests were a little too far forward, so I had to bring them in closer. Once everything was shifted forward, the farm was finally acting as it should. The last finishing touch I added were some trap doors, just to create a barrier between the items and the player. After that, I duplicated the same iron farm design on the other side of the building. With both farms complete, I could finally finish up the building itself, and I began by adding these nice trapdoor windows. It's finally time for the fun part, at least in my opinion, and that's building this factory. I began by carving out a bunch of windows because number one, windows are nice, and number two, I just wanted the brick blocks back to use them elsewhere. I filled every window with trapdoors because trapdoors look great! Better than glass, even. I mean, look at that. How can you not like that? I then checked to see the progress of our iron farms, and they were generating plenty of nuggets. So it was time to harvest the fruits of our labor and repurpose them for the factory. I converted the nuggets into iron ingots, and with the iron ingots, I began to craft metal bars, because those were an ingredient necessary to craft catwalks. They're basically an industrial-looking platform that you'll find in almost every factory. Now, they were a cosmetic block, but they also had some function. I still wanted access to the upper portions of the iron farm, so I was gonna have these stairs so that we could create this elevated platform and access it. The only tricky part was figuring out where to put the stairs because I didn't design the most efficient floor plan. Eventually, I was just placing stuff down, seeing what worked and what didn't, and I came to the conclusion that placing the stairs in the middle was gonna be the best option. After that, I began building the platform for the upper level, and eventually this catwalk was finally taking shape. I now had access to both upper portions of the iron, farms. I went back to the clay farm and saw that we had an abundance of materials to work with, so I collected it, converted it into bricks, and began adding more to our building. And like I said before, I really want this building to give off a steampunk vibe, so I was gonna have to start experimenting with new building blocks. And what better building blocks to work with than those added by the Create Mod itself? Like the copper pipe. I had so much copper to spare that it was pretty easy to make this decision. I crafted a lot of pipes and began using them as columns for the building. I usually try to hide copper pipes when I'm building them for machines, but wow, those look great. I just think that they really highlight the edges of the building real well. It seemed like orange was a color I was leaning towards, and what other orange block is there that you could get really quickly for really cheap? Acacia wood. And there was an acacia forest nearby, so I hopped on a horse and I rode all the way over there to get it. Speaking of horses, there were a lot of horses just roaming nearby, all of them with saddles, which leads me to believe that there was a villager tribe that was massacred, leaving their poor horses behind. Once I got to an acacia tree, I began chopping it down quickly as well as the trees nearby. I collected the saplings, replanted to them near the base because I wasn't trying to make that journey all over again, and then with the wood that I had, I began crafting some of the first acacia elements, that being the acacia signs. I slapped them on the side of the building, and they looked really good. I then had a builder's dilemma, one that I had to resolve on Discord with a couple of friends, that being which column looked better, the stripped acacia log or the granite column? Leave your comment down below and tell me what you think. In the end, I added trapdoors to the acacia column, and to me, that was the best one. But it's still subject to change. Don't forget to comment down below. I cleaned up the sides of the building, and after that, I thought to myself, how can I really make this building come to life? What can I do to give it that steampunk touch that we're missing? The answer was the flywheel. At least it was the beginning of the answer. You see, the flywheel used to be an actual block that you could use for generating power but they updated it so that it's nothing more than a decorative wheel, and decorative wheels, well, that sounds exactly like the thing we need for that steampunk element of our build. Next to the flywheel, I added some gears. They were all connected to a mechanism in the back, and this right here was my favorite addition to the building, because once I added water to the water wheel, well, take a look. The building came to life. For the first time ever, we had a building with moving components. After that, it was time to wrap up the rest of the building, so I began constructing the second floor with windows up on the upper level. And then for some reason, my build site became incredibly haunted. I was fighting a ghost, and once the ghost was dead, I went back to the workshop, only to find Grim Reapers. 
I must have built on a burial ground or something. With the ghosts gone, I began constructing a massive smokestack right in the middle of the iron farm. I built a roof on both sides of the building, and then after that, I began constructing the very top of the smokestack. And for that special effect, I even added nine campfires. Shortly after, I wanted to duplicate what we had done in the front of the building and add more moving gears. So on each side of the building, I added a large cogwheel, connected it with some gearboxes and a conveyor belt, and it was my goal to make the whole thing move together and sync. I connected everything to the first mechanism, and once it was connected, the whole building was in motion. All that was left to do now was to pave the road. Well, there you have it, folks. An iron farm, an essential element to our steampunk world. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, leave a like and share your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. This has been Double Sal. Have a great day.